I am the type of unimaginative person who was intrigued at the possibilities of Worf and Troy hooking up. So when we get to our first proper Kirk episode and Pepper and Court, Seven of Nine, and Odo, I have no idea what is going to happen next. And that's not romantic. Well, it's kind of romantic. But when Seven pulls a phaser on Kirk, I'm acutely aware of how seduction is 60% of the tools in Kirk's chest, and I don't want to rule anything out. So the Enterprise is pulling into its home port for maintenance on our own. And we get a great sequence where Ben Sisko is greeted by Jake and Jennifer Sisko. Scotty meets his sister and nephew. McCoy meets his daughter and looks around just a second for her mom. And Picard is greeted by Robert and Marie with their son Renee. And just when you think this series can't swing any lower, uh, there is a series of Voyager crew homecoming shots whose length I would describe as generous. If pressed to describe it in more than one word, I would call it a pointed insult to the writers of Voyager's final episode, Endgame. Well, let's go with generous. So our story proper starts with Kirk getting pulled aside by Admiral Ross and <laughs> Federation Commissioner 7 of 9, and they want Kirk's help. A Starfleet starbase has a black market, and some of the Federation citizens who live there are using a lot of their allotments. Starbase 47 is run by Starfleet, but it's got Federation Technician, Starfleet, for lack of a better word, Dependents, Federation Vendors, and Non-Federation Shopkeepers, which brings us to Quark, son of Keldar. Well, Admiral Ross, suspecting Non-Federation citizens of causing trouble in a low-key call-out of xenophobia, brings us to Quark. But we get there, we get to Quark. But some things can be reviewed, and so Kirk goes to Odo, and Jim, you can't just tell someone, you don't have any family and no one loves you, help me with this investigation. It's not, it, you don't, you... It is not so many things, Jim. But no sooner are Kirk and Odo discussing what's going on and asking crew members to ask their family about goings on that the Enterprise just becomes unmoored. And even though Worf said some disparaging things about the Starbase staff earlier, the Starbase rigging crew fucking uncork a lot of well-built tension while managing to get me to overlook the CGI that's... Uh... So the docking clamps in the Enterprise had a bad reaction with some visiting alien energy, and Odo explains wavelengths to us with a surprising amount of scientific fidelity when he describes this incredibly unlikely event and the unlikelierness of the Starbase civilian rigging crew being ready for it, which they absolutely were. And it is easy to forget what a locked-on professional Captain Kirk is in the original series until he's put in a room with Odo to knock out some Technobabble exposition into two kind of jam when they're jamming. It's weird, but Odo is the one who's actually less professional, and that's completely in character. So, watching a starship hurtle towards his bar has gotten Quark invested, and the three go through a montage where they construct a 23rd century crazy board out of replicator records, trade goods, and Starbase 47 training rooms and hologram programs, which comes down to something about table nectar, which sounds like nipple nectar, but isn't. And while the visiting aliens have a punch-up with some Tellarites who live on the planet the Starbase is orbiting, uh, it turns out those aliens have a cultural hang-up regarding being treated like shit, and the Tellarites have a cultural hang-up about not treating people like like shit, so the two get on like a house on fire. And I know that getting on like a house on fire is supposed to be a good thing, but in what way is watching a house burn down a positive experience? Getting on like a house on fire is like getting along like an egg in a dune buggy race or an origami crane in a hurricane. So the biochemistry of the Alien of the Week interacts badly with Tellarite biochemistry, meaning that their punch-ups are literally toxic to everyone around them. But before I could even get excited about any social metaphors in play, Kirk engages his fuck around and find out strategy, which involves stopping a grav sled of Tapplenecker being transported by a random civilian. And this predictably upsets the well-oiled gears, or should I say, well-oiled Borg nanites of the operation, which was to use the nipple nectar to prevent a large-scale punch-up. Our heroes, uh, they deliver the goo-boos, separate some brawlers, and do it all with a minimum of personal profit margin. I, I won't spoil it, but uh, Starbase 47, the episode, focuses on the determined citizenhood of Federation citizen, and demonstrates a lot more of what life is like in the 23rd century if you're not in Starfleet. It, it falters a bit in terms of characters and action. The high tension scenes feel a little bit tacked on, but the ideas are ably shown and the story itself holds together while giving us some, some fun crossover interactions. It's good. It's good like a house on fire. See, it sounds stupid.